I never know where to start. Whatever, just start. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Hey. So I just got off of work and <laughs> enough is enough. These fragrances have been sitting in their boxes for months at this point and it is well time for us to go ahead and finally have this humongous fragrance haul that I have been talking about for ever at this point. This haul is going to have a little something for everybody including some new releases and a number of these fragrances including the new releases I haven't even smelled yet so that should be cute and chaotic just like we like it. Naturally we're going to go ahead and dive in but before we get into today's video make sure that you are subscribed and of course hit that notification bell boo, so you don't miss when I upload another video. Ah! And of course if you enjoyed today's video I would really greatly appreciate if you gave me a thumbs up because it really helps to support the channel and help us to grow. And never forget if you're interested in trying or buying any of the fragrances that I mentioned in today's video to shop via any available links and or discount codes down below in the description box because that also really helps support the channel and you go buy it anyway. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Now, if you would like to see my thoughts on these new releases and additions to my fragrance collection, make sure you keep watching. Now this fragrance in particular is not necessarily new to the collection, but an upgrade of sorts. This was gifted to me by my good sis Vanilla Macau during our Scented Sister Swap Soiree, whatever it is, whatever the name is. I'll have it linked up in the cards. I told you all in a pinned comment that I ruined that collaboration and it's because somehow because of who I am as a person and because of how exhausted I was when I filmed that video I completely missed that Vanilla gave me an entire gift set of Dolce & Gabbana's Devotion which if you've been around I love. Vanilla is never going to forgive me but <laughs> here are the fragrances, another travel spray of devotion because I did finish my first one and it's a hundred mil. It's a hundred mil. I'm not even gonna show you the travel spray. Let me just show you the full size bottle of devotion, which is just a citrusy vanilla orange blossom good time. I've already been playing around with this. We've already talked about this on the channel, so I'm not going to delve too deep. Performance, compliments, and just a perfectly sweet, lemony, good time. Vanilla, I know you're never gonna forgive me and I'm very sorry. But girl, thank you so much for, again for giving me the 100 mil of Dolce & Gabbana's devotion. We love her. So first up, let's go ahead and start with the new releases just because if you're not new here, I tend to start my fragrance hauls with travel sprays and I got travel sprays of the new Gucci Flora Gorgeous Orchid as well as the new Burberry Goddess Intense. I have not smelled either one of these and we gonna get to see what they hitting for together. Let's go ahead and start with Burberry Goddess just because I have talked about the original on my channel previously. Here's the travel spray. And uh, while a travel spray is so expensive, I think this was like $40. The blood, the blood of Jesus, okay? Don't make no sense. If you are not new here, I have talked about Burberry Goddess, the original on the channel previously. And let me just say, my opinion has definitely changed since it initially launched and since I've had it kind of sitting in my collection. I have revisited it recently just because I wanted to have fresh perspective when it comes to how it compares to this new one that I still haven't sprayed yet. But <laughs> I will say that my opinion has changed a little bit. While I still think it's just a vanilla, it has, you know, matured and the performance has even improved since I first got it. Um, and it's a really pretty cozy, easy reach scent, but that's just me. You know what I'm saying? Other people might feel a different way. Anyway, let's go ahead and see what Burberry Goddess the Intense is hitting for. And again, this is my first spray, as you can see. And I want to spray it on skin. I washed and moisturized my hands so that way we have, you know, a fresh palette. In the air, I'm smelling that lavender. Well, I can see why people are not enjoying this. That lavender is lavendering. It's very strong, very aromatic. It's definitely not as soft or as sweet, I should say, as the original. The lavender in this is giving a little bit medicinal, but 
I will say as it's drying down, the vanilla is starting to come through and it's helping to kind of soften that lavender. Um, compared to the original, I will say that this is not my favorite first spray, but I'm not ready to, <laughs> I'm not necessarily ready to cancel it out just yet. Again, this is first spray. I have not worn this full body yet. It don't smell bad to me though. I, I smell the Burberry Goddess DNA coming out as it dries down. But I'm not getting that same uh, powdery dustiness or that same soft feminine edge that I feel like Burberry Goddess gives me. And I don't think this one has the cacao in it. And I think that that along with the patchouli and the shift in the potency of the lavender is is why people have either love this or hate this. <laughs> I don't think this is bad. I feel like this was geared more so towards the people that felt like the original Burberry Goddess was basic. I feel like this might be <laughs> geared more towards people, you know, like me. And, you know, I appreciate the effort. So, yeah, that's my first impressions of Burberry Goddess The Intense. So next up, let's go ahead and do Gucci Flora Gorgeous Orchid. I don't have any of the gorgeous Gucci Gorgeous line in my collection, but Mama Tresses has the pink one, which I want to say is Gardenia. And as a non-Gardenia fan, I don't hate that fragrance. <laughs> I also enjoy the purple one, which I want to say is Magnolia. Those are the only ones that I can recall smelling, and I don't dislike those, but I haven't really found a Gucci Flora fragrance or Gucci fragrance in general <laughs> that I necessarily want to invest in a full-size bottle but you know we'll keep trying <laughs> here is the tube or the travel spray I don't know if my light is going to be too bright for this it is bright yellow um but that's the travel spray for gorgeous orchid and let's do a first impression to this again first spray Ooh, this is not what I was expecting. There's something marine or like fresh oceanic to this. Something's in the eye. Oh, Lord Jesus. No, I don't have time for this. I'm not really clear on how to explain this. There's something oceanic about this, like sea air, like ocean air. It's fresh. But it's not tropical per se. Like I don't smell like coconut or like like a like a fruitiness to it at all. But maybe like a like a salt salt water. And the vanilla is like light. This is really catching me off guard because I wasn't anticipating this smelling like this. I thought that this was going to be a little bit more sweet, but it's definitely vanilla orchid. Okay, so this is giving a uh, more floral or planty type of vanilla, if that makes sense. It's not sweet, at least not to start. This is fresh. I'm okay, Gucci. I am really enjoying the fact that it's not what I expected, one, and two, that it's not like super sweet. This... This is going to probably be pretty polarizing for the vanilla girlies because of that very real fact that it's not sweet. I know the vanilla girlies love to smell like cake, cookie, and pie all year round, but I'm eager to hear the vanilla girlies' opinions on this because this ain't that. This ain't that. It's refreshing to experience a spin on vanilla that I don't feel like I've really smelled before. So for that reason, in conjunction with the fact that this ain't super sweet and childish <laughs> i'm gonna spend some more time with this as well and report back but if you are a vanilla girly definitely sound off in the comments and let me know your thoughts on the new gucci flora gorgeous orchid um because i kind of like it i kind of like it since fall is on its way and we're already on the topic of vanillas now makes good a time as any to go ahead and mention commodity and shout out to them for sending over this commodity milk 
gift set, I guess you could say, because you could definitely use it as a gift. If you are familiar with the House of Commodity, they essentially do their fragrances in three different modifications to give you your preference when it comes to performance and projection. So if you want a more modest fragrance, you can do the personal scent space. If you want a fragrance that is more moderate when it comes to projection, you can do the expressive. And if you want one that's going to announce your presence, you can go ahead and do the bold scent space. This gift set includes the expressive, which is this one ounce bottle here, as well as the travel spray of Milk Bold. So here is a close up of Milk Expressive and how cute is this bottle their packaging is super simplistic and just minimal so you know if you're one that likes to display your fragrances commodity is a good one for that especially when it's cute and dainty like this one like i said this is the expressive one and this is my first time spraying this particular bottle but i have samples so this is not at all not at all new to the family, but I'm glad to have a full size bottle of this. This is going to be so good come fall. Honestly, I could wear this right now, but I know it's going to get even better after it sits. It's sweet. It's fluffy. It's got a little woodiness to it, a little char, if you will. Mm, that is so good. And it's a little bit sexy cozy and for such a great value you're not only getting the milk expressive you're also getting a travel spray of the milk bold which is the most potent scent space and again i've played with the tester of this but it's my first time spraying from the travel now milk bold while still giving that similar sweet fluffy cozy vibe as milk expressive Got a little more oomph to it, you know what I'm saying? A little more grit. Definitely more woody, maybe even a little smoky and a little sexy. I mean, honestly, if you are into fragrances and especially are a vanilla fan, there's just no way that you have not heard of Commodity Milk. <laughs> I, I'm just not willing to believe that. But in case you're an exception to that, if you have absolutely no idea what Commodity Milk is all about, or if you are a huge fan of Commodity Milk and you want to back up, now is a good time to go ahead and hop on this gift set because you didn't hear this for me, but the price on this is about to go up very, very soon. So if you want to jump on it, you better go ahead and jump on it. This next fragrance is super popular and comes from Al Rehab and this is Chaco Musk. And you may remember me mentioning this in the Scent Sister Swap situation. I'll have the video linked up in the cards. This was gifted to me by my good sis, Vanilla McCall, whose channel I also have linked up in the cards. Here is the full-size bottle of Chaco Musk. And honestly, it's been sitting since we've done that collaboration. So I'm really eager to see how it smells now. Um, because if you remember from that video, it was really, really lightweight. And I could barely really smell anything, even when layering it with a perfume oil. It still smells like alcohol when you first spray it though. I gotta give it that, so give it a second. Now, as this is drying down on the tester strip, I am picking up more of that sweetness that people tend to really love from this fragrance, but I have to say it's still very lightweight. And I'm certain that this is not going to register on a tester strip the same way it will on skin, but frankly, my dear, it's August and I don't feel like smelling like chocolate, so I'm not getting ready to, to, to deal with this right now. I will... I will come back to this in the fall and definitely see what it gives on its own and while late with something else. But right now she's getting very much nothing. I'll go ahead and revisit this in about a month or so once the weather cools and hopefully by then it'll be ready for me to wear and I'll actually be able to smell it. But again, that's Al Rehab's Chaco Musk. Another one gifted to me from my scent sister Vinia McCall is Latapa's Yara also mentioned in that very same video it smells pretty from the atomizer and it smells pretty like when you first spray it and the mere fact that i can actually smell yara on a tester strip now is significant progress from when i first got it it's fruity it's creamy it's a little sweet powdery definitely a pretty girl fragrance i hate the bottle but yara is a very pretty fragrance and it garners compliments i got a compliment the very first time i wore this when i wore it to the office 
but I will say I ain't even smell it. I'm gonna go ahead and continue spending time with this and see how it develops over time. But so far, so good when it comes to Yara from Latafa. Vanilla also gave me Yara Tooth from Latafa. Here is that packaging. Come on, lighting. Thanks, girl. So here's a close up of the bottle. Literally the same as the original Yara. It just says, obviously, Tooth. And it's a different color. Now, Yara Tooth, I haven't worn on skin yet. So this is the first time I'm revisiting since. Oh, God, here we go with that cap again. And it still smells good in the air, but I would definitely say it is way more perfumey in the air. So much so that I got. Got a little lightheaded just now. A yard tooth is also fruity, floral, and musky, but they just use in different fruits. This one has mango, so it gives it kind of a a tart fruity situation, whereas the original Yara is more of a slightly sweet fruity situation. Really pretty and perfumey. And it's definitely projected more, at least on the tester strip, than the original. So I will definitely continue spending time with Latafa's Yara Tooth and get back to y'all on it. Let's, let's just start over. <laughs> just start over. Another newbie to the collection via Vanilla is this one from the Dua brand. And this one is Huff and Puff. That ain't what it's called. Puff or Tuft. <laughs> this one is inspired by House of Siage's Hufflepuff from the Harry Potter collection. Here's a close up of the bottle. And this one I've actually worn. This is another citrus vanilla <laughs> because, you know, that's what the girls love these days. But this one has a coconut note that I feel is a toasted coconut that just makes this so delicious. I've worn this a few times already and I've really enjoyed how this performs. It really clings to my skin as well as my clothes. But smelling this now, revisiting this now after, you know, maybe a month or so since I've worn it, this has gotten even sweeter and might not be a good fit for, you know, the August type of heat. The citrus and the coconut might only be able to do so much with like the vanilla caramel sweet portion of this fragrance at least on the tester strip this seems like it's a little too sweet now not to mention this is an extra so i'm eager to see how this continues to develop over time and again this is the dual brands puffle tuft now these next few fragrances were sent to me by the brand but they ain't paying me they don't even know that i'm talking about these first up is from the clean reserve h2o collection and i think i've talked to you all about this one before this is nectarine petal come on lighting thanks girl this is from clean reserves water base collection and i'll go ahead and start a picture and cut my losses here but this is just a fresh clean simple musky fragrance like a lot of the clean reserve fragrances but that nectarine is so juicy and ever so slightly sweet this is another one that's perfect for warm weather and another one that's just easy to reach for and easy to wear. And please don't get it twisted. While this is a water-based collection, in my experience with Nectarine Petal, as well as another in the line called Brilliant Peony, these perform exceptionally well to me, my nose, my skin, okay? It's just a pretty, watery, clean, fruity, floral, musky good time. And I highly recommend getting your nose on it. Again, Clean Reserves Nectarine Petal. Another one sent over to me from Clean Beauty that I think we talked about in my May favorites, which I'll have linked up in the cards, is Clean Classics Spring Breeze. My lighting's too bright. Okay, there we go. So there's the packaging for that. Now I've showed this to you all before. Here is a close up of the bottle and obviously there's a dent this one i've told you all before is laundry detergent with like a little bit of a lavender edge to it and the lavender i don't feel is super harsh or aromatic to where it can give you a headache or where it's not pleasant spring breeze smells exactly like its name it's fresh it's clean you can wear this to the office without offending people you can wear this if you're just lounging around the house, errands. 
yeah, on par with other Clean Classic and Clean Reserve fragrances and just easy to reach for, easy to wear. Again, this is Clean Classic's Spring Breeze. Also received Apple Blossom from Clean Beauty Collective. This is from their Classic Collection. And this is actually one I have wanted for a while. So I was extremely excited when they sent this over. Here is a close up of the bottle. It looks exactly like the Spring Breeze bottle, except it is called Apple Blossom and it's green. Now this one I've only worn like once or twice. So the dent is definitely not as significant, but this is just so juicy and fun. Definitely a tart, fresh green apple. I also think that there are some florals in here and definitely some type of watery, translucent, light, clean musks. I don't really think it's going to be able to withstand any cool or cold weather just because of how light it wears. But I'll continue spending time with this while it's still warm out and report back. Again, this is Clean Classics. What is it called? Apple Blossom. <laughs> Last one sent to me from Clean Beauty is another one from their classic line and this is Malibu Beach. And I, correct me if I'm wrong, this is their latest release for summer. Thank you so much lighting. And as you can see, this is obviously supposed to give, you know, beachy summer tropical vibes. And that's why I haven't opened it. <laughs> Here's a close up of the bottle of Malibu Beach. Really cute label. Of course you all can't see it my lighting is a hater but just take my word for it <sighs> i hope i don't hate this i hope i don't hate it my girl johnny antoinette seems to enjoy it but she is also a fan of coconut so first spray first spray from this bottle let's see i don't like this <laughs> coconut is very coconutty it's giving coconut meat it's creamy and cloying it's just yeah this is not a good fragrance for me this is definitely for the coconut tropical solar fragrance lovers and y'all know that ain't it yeah. while i appreciate clean beauty for sending this over unfortunately clean classics malibu beach is just not for me moving on to a coconut fragrance that i actually enjoy and that we have talked about on the channel previously this one was sent over to me from sniff and this is called coco shimmy here is a close-up again of the bottle and i know you see the dent <laughs> She was in my most recent favorites, which if you haven't seen it, I'll go ahead and leave it linked up in the cards. But Coco Shimmy, <laughs> so good. This is my type of coconut. It gives coconut without being overbearing and without being super synthetic and headache inducing. And it has other notes that play up the coconut, but in an understated way. The pineapple for me is definitely the star in this fragrance, which is why I love it so much because I'm not generally a coconut fan. This is just tropical summer fun in a bottle. The pineapple understood its assignment. It's really the star of this fragrance for me. And I'm so glad that I finally found a coconut that doesn't want to make me throw up. <laughs> and again, this is Sniff's Coco Shimmy. Also from Sniff, I have their collaboration with motivational speaker, author, influencer, Alex L. This one we've also talked about previously on the channel. It was in a previous favorites, which I also leave linked in the cards. This one I actually bought after testing out a sample of it. It is a close up of, again, Heal the Way from Sniff in collaboration with Alex L. You may remember when I mentioned this previously, how it has affirmations all over the packaging, including the box. Bottle. and you may also remember how much I love this fragrance if you in any way deem yourself a pistachio fan run don't walk this is nutty it's creamy it's sweet comforting cozy a little green a little woody so that way it's not too sweet I get great performance from this this lingers on my skin and wafts in the air throughout a full day's wear like a solid eight hours before it becomes a skin scent on me my skin 
to me in my notes. So freaking delicious and so well done. Highly, highly, highly recommend getting your nose on this one. Again, from Sniff in collaboration with Alex L. Heal the Way. Another fragrance sent over by Sniff that we've talked about previously in a favorites is Rose Era in collaboration with TikTok influencer Monet McMichael. We've already talked about the packaging, the fragrance, all of that. Um, previously so of course I'll have that favorites video linked up in the cards this one here is a close-up of the bottle and you'll see that the dent in this one is not as significant but <laughs> let me remind you that they sent over a lab sample and my lab sample is completely empty me and Rose Era have had significant time together this summer and I regret nothing this is everything that I told you it was Fizzy, juicy, fruity goodness, clean, almost soapy. And the rose in this is so youthful, but not childish. There's also some saffron that adds a little bit of warmth and uniqueness to this. And just makes you smell like, like a grown woman, but a young grown woman. Me and her have been having a time. She garners compliments, she laughs. And it's just pretty. Of course, you can use my discount code to shop at Sniff directly. But this fragrance has also recently launched at Ulta, which I also have linked down below in the description box. But regardless, get your nose on it. And again, this is Monet McMichael and Sniff's collaboration, Rose Era. Sniff also sent over a couple of fragrances from their secret menu collection. This one is really popular with the gourmand girlies. This is Crumb Couture, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, Crunk Couture. Here is a close-up of the travel. And I have smelled Crumb Couture before. Um, and I hate it. <laughs> I get like a fruity opening where it's like syrupy sweet, like a cooked down berry of some sort. Like, like you're making a jam or a reduction or something. And I also get like a buttery flaky type of pastry yeah disgusting i don't like this it's just too literal it's cloying frankly i would never put this on my skin and it seems like it would definitely be better as like a home fragrance um like a candle or some sort so yeah no disrespect to the gourmand girlies Crumb Couture from Sniff is just not for me. Another one sent over to me from Sniff's secret menu collection is this one called Soda Pop. Is the picture gonna move? I feel like the picture doesn't really, can you see that? There it goes. See how the, the drink kind of moves? How cool is that? Anywho, here is a close up of the Soda Snob bottle. And this one I'm actually excited to smell because I haven't. So let's see, first spray. Oh, that smell like Coca-Cola in the air, like literal fountain soda. Yeah, yeah, the fizziness is there, that sweet syrupiness is there. There's also like a, something else is in here. This smells like you just twisted the cap off of a two liter of coca-cola this is really interesting i don't have anything like this in my collection so i'll definitely spend time with this but i probably won't pull this out until it starts to cool off because this is a little bit sweet not too sweet though because i do feel like there's some citrus or something in here cutting through how sweet this is i also feel like i'm picking up maybe like a like a cinnamon or a nutmeg or something like that that's giving us a little bit of you know, a little, little kick. Hmm, that's interesting. Okay, I'll definitely get back to you on this one once I actually try it out on skin. But first impressions of Sniff Soda Snob. All right now. Sniff was also gracious enough to send over Vanilla Vice, which I feel like was their first cash cow. This is definitely one of the first fragrances that I recall seeing when Sniff came on to the market. Here is a close up of that bottle. Another one that I've smelled, but I haven't opened this one. So let's go ahead and crack the plastic on this. Here is a close up of Vanilla Vice. 
I have tested this before, but this will be the first time I'm spraying the bottle. And let's see if my impressions have changed from the first time I smelled it. No. <laughs> this is vanilla, as you might assume, but it's kind of woody and a little smoky. Now this is getting a little sweeter as it dries down. And it smells familiar. I can't really put my finger on it, but it smells like another vanilla fragrance that I've experienced before. And that woodiness is dialed back a little bit as it's drying down as well, at least on a tester strip. Yeah, I like it so far, but I'll definitely report back my full rounded thoughts in a future video on Vanilla Vice. If you're interested in trying or buying, I'll have my discount code to stiff down below in the description box, as well as the link to Ulta if that's your preference. But again, this is Vanilla Vice from Sniff. Sniff also sent over Sweet Ash, which I think is another one of their well-beloved fragrances. And this one I haven't smelled just yet. So let's crack this open. If I can get it out of the damn box. Here's a close-up of the Sweet Ash bottle, much like the other bottles from Sniff. Let's see what this is giving. I'm kind of scared. Ash makes me feel like it's going to smell a little too smoky. Oh, no. Oh, that's really fresh. It's earthy. There's a greenness to it, but not in a like obnoxious type of way. When I say earthy, I don't want you to be afraid because I don't feel like this is too green or too woody, especially since it has like a, a slight ambery touch that makes it ever so slightly sweet. And I don't feel like that amber adds too much warmth or sweetness to where this leans one way or another. I feel like this is perfectly unisex. Hmm. I had to spend some time with this Sniff. <laughs> I'll definitely be getting my wear out of Sweet Ash from Sniff. So stand by my thoughts on this in a future video. Last but not least from Sniff, who was so gracious enough to send me over these 511 fragrances, but I'm exhausted, <laughs> is Tarte Deco. Another one that I've heard about, but not a whole lot. So let's go ahead and see. We'll go ahead and struggle to get this out of the box as well. Here is a close-up of the Tarte Deco bottle, which looks like every other <laughs> bottle that we've experienced from Sniff. But let's go ahead and see what it smells like. All I know about Tarte Deco is that there's a cherry note. So, yay, another cherry. Very medicinal, it's very much giving Robitussin, Damatac, NyQuil. Now, as it's drying down on the texture strip, it is becoming less medicinal, which is good. And there's some woodiness starting to come through as well. Maybe a little bit of vanilla. Yeah, there's a little bit of a, I don't know if it's like powdery. I don't necessarily want to say creamy, but there's 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 something there coming through. I am not in love with this in first sniff, but because it's getting better as it dries down, I'm willing to, you know, give it a shot on skin. I'll definitely have to wear this on skin and report back my thoughts in a future video, but yeah. First impressions of Sniff's Tarte Deco. I'm exhausted and this video is getting entirely too long. <laughs> also recently got a PR package from the team over at Finery. So shout out to them for sending these fragrances over. If you have seen my shorts or my Instagram, my TikTok, you've probably already seen me talk about these, especially the flower bed fragrance, which I mentioned in a summer lineup video. So we'll go ahead and talk about that one first. I'm kind of tore up the box a little bit, but that's my business <laughs> here is a flower bed and in case you're not familiar finery is a super affordable house affordable house for english press one <laughs> that you can find at target they have fragrance mints which are a little bit more affordable as well as eau de parfum formulations this one in particular we've already talked about on the channel in my summer video which i'll have linked up in the cards and this is flower bed this one is supposed to be inspired by Chanel's Chance Autange, if I'm not mistaken. And we've talked about this one briefly on the channel and I've worn it a couple of times. Yeah, it's just a really fruity, fresh, light, dainty, everyday, easy reach fragrance. 
it's pretty there's a little bit of fruitiness in this i wonder if it's like a like a pear or i don't know something that's really like light and refreshing also picking up that floral i think it's peony in this which gives it like a lightweight kind of aquatic feel to it and just makes it so feminine and girly flirty not at all a loud beast mode fragrance just a pretty feminine fruity floral fragrance that i feel like you can wear for just about anything perfect for errands the office yeah, just pleasant and pretty. So if you are interested in anything that sounds like that, definitely recommend getting your nose on Finery's Flower Bed Eau de Parfum. Probably should have started with this one since it's the only body mist that I have from Finery. And this is in their I'm a Musk scent. I think this one is supposed to be a dupe of Ariana Grande's Cloud. And here's the thing. I hate this <laughs> immediately when I spray this I pick up that sandalwood and it is a how do I say this the sandalwood in this to me gives pickle juice oh it's so bad and it does it on skin too I don't know it oh uh, I don't, I don't know if the Eau de Parfum is better, but the body mist, for me at least, terrible. I feel like this was my experience with the actual Ariana Grande Cloud. When I first got it, I loved it. It was sweet. It was fluffy. But this smells like Ariana Grande's Cloud once it switched up on me without like the coconut just pickle juice funk not at all a good time horrible i could not wait to scrub this off when i wore it terrible terrible i'm sorry no disrespect but this is an absolute no for me i'm a musk body mist from finery Whew, finery should be ashamed of themselves this next one from finery i have only tested i haven't worn this one just yet this is madame i love the color of this packaging but of course, of course my lighting is too bright. Moving right along, let's go ahead and pull out the bottle. Look at how pretty this pink is. So freaking cute. And again, this is Madame Eau de Parfum. This one is powdery and floral with a little like earthy spiciness to it so it's probably some patchouli in this this is, this is a little sophisticated <laughs> maybe that's why it's called madame because this is it's a little bit grown definitely more grown than flower bed oh i'm gonna have to spend some time with this one i feel like this is going to be what be more suitable for cooler weather because it's kind of got some some weight on it. not heavy and overbearing but it's definitely got more weight to it than flower bed yeah, this smells very sophisticated and mature, so if you're not into like powdery or patchouli scents, definitely, you know, steer clear of this one. But I will be trying this out definitely once it cools off, even though this looks like it's going to be a summertime fragrance, right? I don't know, but it smells really, it smells too heavy for the summertime, at least for the summertime right now. It's just too hot for this right now for me. So stand by for my thoughts on this one in a future video. But again, this is Madame from Finery. Next one sent over from Finery is their Midnight Cafe Eau de Parfum. And as you can see, the plastic is still on this one. So let's go ahead and crack her open. It's a close up of the Midnight Cafe bottle. It's really purpley, eggplanty type of color. I'm certain my lights are too bright, so you know, just take my word for it. This is one that I think I've tested in store before, but not this one, obviously, because I just took the plastic off. Now, Midnight Cafe, there is a presence of coffee, which I'm not a huge fan of, but I think there's like a, a creamy coffee situation going on here because it's not super like dark roast 
bitter coffee. This is a little creamy, a little powdery, but it's not sweet, at least not in the opening. I also feel like I'm picking up a white floral, maybe jasmine, and just on the tester strip, it doesn't seem like it's endolic, but you know, of course I can't really speak to that because I haven't worn this on skin yet. Another one that I feel like is probably going to be better suited for cooler weather. And for that reason, because it's too damn hot, I'll have to get back to you on this one as well. But first impressions, this is not my favorite, but I'm still willing to at least try to give this one a chance. And that says a lot because I don't like coffee. So stand by on this one. <laughs> this is again, Midnight Cafe from Finery. Last but not least from Finery, they sent over Born to Empress or Impress, you know, depending on your inflection. My lighting's too bright. We're not, we're not gonna keep doing this because I'm tired. Ooh, another really cute pink colored bottle different heels pink but very cutesy let's see what born to empress or impress is given first spray oh it's tart it's fruity it's rosy is that musk in the base? If you are a Delina fan, this ain't that, okay? This is not giving you Delina. It smells, you know what this smells like? This smells like Dolce & Gabbana's Trailing Peritrice. That is what this is reminding me of, literally on this paper. That fruity, tart, tangy, mouth-watering, fruity, floral, refreshing feminine easy reach just mentioned to you all in my most recent video my august fragrance tray of course i have that linked up in the cards this smells just like it to me on this paper this probably has rhubarb in it and i wonder if it has like a watermelon or like a kiwi something tart is in this i'm intrigued and definitely think this is worth getting your nose on Ooh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and add this to my, you know, remaining summer lineup as well because it seems fitting. Again, this is Finery's Born to Impress or Born to Empress, you know, whatever your inflection is. Since we're on the topic of tart, fruity, rosy fragrances, I also received this PR package from Commodity, another one that you'll probably have seen in my shorts. And this is their newest release juice now the team at commodity was gracious enough to send over all three scent spaces so shout out to them for that the personal one that they sent in a travel spray i'm not going to bother showing it to you because you're not going to be able to see it this one as soon as i spray this i get strawberry and raspberry it's really mouth-watering and juicy as the name would imply but i also get that rhubarb which is very very tart so that might turn some people off to this fragrance i will say that all of them have that very similar tart tangy rosy makeup but this one is definitely a more delicate soft and least offensive version of it it's subtle lightweight closer to your person and while it has, you know, rose and rhubarb, much like Parfums de Marley's Delina, if you're not a fan of Delina, I would still see about this one because it goes in a very different direction to me and my nose. First impressions, I enjoy it and definitely recommend getting your nose on it. Of course, I'll spend time with it and report back my findings in a future video. So stand by on Juice Personal. Now, Juice Bold is exactly that. This is a more spicy and definitely heavier woody approach to that same tart juicy rosy dna definitely way more powerful and potent and definitely less 
delicate and dainty than the other fragrances. And I won't say it's beast mode per se, but it's definitely potent and gonna leave a scent trail. I'm gonna spend time with this probably more so once it starts to cool off because this is definitely more weighty than the other versions of this fragrance, but still good. Sexy and fun. And with it having more of that spicy woodiness, I feel like it's also going to last a good while on skin too. It definitely did in the air, child. Yeah, definitely stand by for my thoughts on this one in a future video. This again is Commodity Juice Bold. So Commodity sent over a full size of the expressive scent space of Commodity Juice. And this one I've only worn on skin once. So I'll just give you a second impression, if you will. Expressive is that same tart, refreshing, bright, juicy, rosy DNA. And it has woodiness to it, but it's definitely a lighter woodiness, if you will. It's not super dense and heavy. Because in my opinion, this is giving summer, summer, summer time. This just gives warm weather to me. Spring, summer, for sure. And when I wore it, I wore it for, you know, like running errands, nothing too serious and got solid performance. This is, like I said, the middle of the road when it comes to commodity scent spaces and still did what needed to be done. Understood the assignment, if you will. I'll be honest in saying that it's not one that I feel like you need to rush out and get your nose on because it's not super unique or innovative. But fun and worth checking out if you're interested. And again, this is Commodities Juice Expressive. Last but not least, no stranger to the channel because we have talked about this previously in a favorites video, Donna Karen's Cashmere and Palo Santo. Now, I don't already told y'all when I mentioned this in my favorites video that the dent in this will probably be very ridiculous by the time I did the haul. And I meant it, you know what I'm saying? Here we are. Here we are. I have not stopped wearing this. I'm still, still reaching for this because it's good. And you know what? I'm not spraying this on anybody's tester sheet. This only goes on skin, guys. This is it. <laughs> I don't know what Auntie Dawn put in this fragrance, but it is still very much cracked to me, okay? Addicted. If you are into Palo Santo fragrances, especially, you need this in your collection. And this is so well done, so well blended. It's addictive, it's comforting, it's cozy, it's sexy. The vanilla adds a little bit of sweetness to that Palo Santo and the peach as a fruity nuance, but please don't get it twisted. Like this is still very much a woody, Palo Santo ass fragrance. And the Lab Danum is not giving you too much harsh, leathery accent to the fragrance. It's just adding an addictive sexiness <laughs> that is obviously working because look at the dents. Like, I don't know what else to tell y'all. She's amazing, okay? 10 out of 10, we highly recommend. Donna Karen's Cashmere and Palo Santo. Finally, folks, it was the fight of my life, but 45 years later, we are all done with today's fragrance haul. You all make sure you drop down in the comments, let me know your thoughts, and if you've tried any of these fragrances, or if you're interested in trying them. Of course, if you're interested in trying them, please, please make sure that you shop via any available links and discount codes down below in the description box, because it really helps me out. After commenting on this video on your way to watching another video of mine, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Thank you all so, 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 so much for watching. Please, please, please be safe, and I'll catch you in the next one. Mm-hmm. Whatever. No plans. Just vibes. I mean, not. I'm not going to cut that out. Fighting for my life. This really don't make no dams. Here we go, girl.